Thank you very much, Alaska and Cora. Um, the Stormont House Agreement and the Fresh Start Agreement need to be implemented to deal with legacy issues. I welcome the coroner's report today in relation to the Ballymurphy Bally massacre. That sense of relief was so evident listening this evening to the families of those innocent people murdered by state forces. It is horrific the anguish and suffering those families were put through by the heinous crimes committed that night by British Army. Unfortunately, there are many, so many other families still grieving for the loss of a loved one, and they have not got the truth, and in some thank, instances thank you, have been you, subjected Deputy. to appalling lies and smears. Thank, thank you, we need to have legacy issues Chuck, dealt with, Minister. Thank you. Thanks, Deputy. Um, the position of the government with respect to legacy of the past in Northern Ireland has been clear and consistent for a number of years now. The Stormont House Agreement framework was reached collectively by both governments and the political parties after intensive negotiations. The, uh, to be accurate, the, uh, the UUP did not support it, but other parties did. Uh, it's vital that we make progress on this for the victims and families who've been waiting for so long uh, and for society as a whole uh, as we seek to build a deeper reconciliation. The government has continued to engage on, on this issue since the Stormont House Agreement was reached in 2014 to work uh, for that important progress uh, and see the agreement implemented. Uh, in March of last year, the UK government issued a written ministerial statement that proposed to significantly depart from the Stormont House Agreement. Since then, I've spoken regularly to the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland to express her strong concerns and to reiterate the importance of a collective approach consistent with the Stormont House Agreement and one which is, which is compliant with international human rights obligations. I reaffirmed those critical principles to the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland when we met last week in Dublin and strongly advised him against any unilateral action on these very sensitive issues. Media reports last week of possible plans on the intro introduction of a statute of limitations have of course caused significant ups upset, shock and concern in Northern Ireland. Uh, in my time as Minister for Foreign Affairs, I've met with many victims and survivors from both communities. I know how hurt they are at the idea of being denied uh, the route to pursue justice on behalf of their loved ones. As the Stormont House, Agreem uh, as the, the Stormont House Agreement framework does, uh, there is a need to take a comprehensive view of how to achieve progress and reconciliation for society as a whole. But the needs of victims and families must be at the heart of that process. Can I join uh, with um, Deputy Smith also in, in welcoming um, the, um, uh, the report released today in relation to the Bally, Bally Murphy um, um, massacre? Um, I, I've had the privilege of meeting um, uh, the families involved uh, uh, in decades of campaigning for justice. Uh, and I think today was a hugely significant and, and important ruling. Uh, making it absolutely clear uh, that of the 10 people that were killed over that three-day period nearly 50 years ago, um, none of them were guilty of anything um, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, should not have been um, uh, uh, killed thank you, uh, uh, in the way that they were. Um, thank Deputy you, Alaska Corner. I thank the Minister for his comments. And again, I remember meeting the Bally Murphy families in the Dáil in 2014, I think it was, and we had a unanimous Dáil motion that in 2015 from memory in support of the Bally Murphy family. Minister, I very much welcome, and I don't doubt the government's commitment to get to dealing with legacy issues. Of course, we have to have the British government um, equally committed, which, which so far they haven't shown, unfortunately. Minister, you, you used the phrases strong concerns, critical principles and unilateral action, the unacceptability of that by the British government. And, and I'm glad that you're reiterating those comments here. It's extremely important. Minister, I mentioned that we had an agreed motion to the Bally Murphy massacre. You will recall that we've had agreed motions in regard to the Dublin Monaghan bombings. We'd agreed motions in 2008, 2011, 2016, where we call upon the British government to give access to an independent international legal person, to give them access to papers relevant Thank to you. the Dublin man and bombing. Sadly, the British government have not responded to the request Thank of a you, sovereign Deputy. parliament. Minister, we need to pursue Thank that vigorously again because we're reaching now Deputy, the 47th anniversary of, that, of those terrible atrocities. Deputy, thank you. We're over time. I know, I know it's a serious issue, but Minister. No, look, um, first of all, in relation to, uh, to Bally Murphy, I, uh, I think it's, um, 
you know, the, the significance of, um, of the report that was released today um, should not be underestimated. Um, you know, this is more, almost five decades ago. This happened over a three-day period. Um, uh, and, um, you know, I think um, the families involved here you know, are in many ways representative of many families across Northern Ireland from, from different backgrounds, different communities uh, that have been tortured for decades uh, because they haven't been believed, they haven't been understood, they haven't been listened to, they haven't managed to establish the truth. Uh, and for reconciliation to be as powerful as it needs to be uh, in, in the context of, of Northern Ireland and its future, uh, we do need to ensure that we have a structured system that can establish the truth where possible and that can also pursue justice where possible. Many victims' families recognise that, that the pursuit of justice in a court may not be possible you, in many cases, you. but they certainly want that opportunity. You, That's yeah. what the Stormont House uh, agreement delivers uh, and we'll continue thank to support thank that. You. Um, thank you. Uh, I'll ask Ken Corn and agree with the Minister. Minister, I, I know families who have lost loved ones and who have never got justice, they've never got the truth in regard to who carried out the atrocities. And I know in my own home area in December 1972 in Bertorba County Cavan, two young teenagers were killed in a bomb, Geraldine O'Reilly and, and Patrick Stanley. And tonight on RTE, they, they will show again a programme about the bombing of Belturbet. And I was able to bring to this house last year information that had been passed to me by senior academics in the University of Nottingham, where, they had, where their research had shown clearly that there was collusion with the forces in Northern Ireland in relation to the transport of that bomb from County Fermanagh into County Cavan on that tragic night. Minister, the Minister for Justice is pursuing that matter at my request with the Northern Authorities. Minister, every opportunity that you have meeting members of the British Government and also working with members of the Northern Ireland Executive, it's absolutely important that we emphasise that we need to get the truth because these families say to me, Brendan, we are all getting Thank older. You, we need to get the Thank truth you, as soon as possible. Thank you, Thank you Alaskan Thank you, Minister to conclude. Yes, Deputy. Uh, um, and for legacy to work, it's, it, it, uh, the, the approach has got to be built on consensus. Uh, and that's the real challenge here, I think, for, for politicians to deliver. Um, we've got to work closely with the British government, and we have to work with all parties in Northern Ireland. Uh, so that we can bring all communities in Northern Ireland with us. Because if we're going to establish the truth, people will have to come forward and speak about things that they may not have spoken about for decades. Um, we will have to ensure that, that PSNI files are made available. We'll have to do our part on this side of the border too. And of course, we've passed legislation that allow uh, members of Angarda Siakana Sh to actually contribute to inquests in Northern Ireland. Uh, which is uh, a legally a different jurisdiction. Um, so uh, both governments have got to work together to deliver a structure that can manage the legacy of the past in a way that contributes positively to reconciliation for the future. Uh, and that's why I have been so direct in saying that neither government should take unilateral action here, uh, that we have got to work through this together and we have got to bring parties uh, most importantly, we've got to bring political parties in Northern Ireland and victims groups and their families have got to be at the heart of everything we do, first and foremost. Uh, no other issues uh, should be prioritised uh, over those objectives. Thank you.